Well, good morning everybody, it's another freezing cold day. I'm sitting in here drawing some dogs and watching my friend Pete on my laptop. Um, I wanted to put a quick video together today um, just about painting one of these bowling pins. Um, custom painting bowling pins are something that is, is quite popular in the sort of custom culture scene. Um, a lot of people look at me kind of strange when I say that I paint them um, until they actually see one that's actually done and then they think, actually, you know, so that is really quite cool. Um, so I just wanted to throw a couple of wee tips um, for painting these things. Um, bowling pins can be kind of difficult to get a hold of depending on where you live. Um, I'm pretty rural, so just the sort of bottom end of the highlands of Scotland. Um, so we're not exactly surrounded by bowling alleys, so I tend to have to find these online and have them shipped to me. Now, most of these, I, I buy them used, I don't buy them brand new. Um, brand new bowling pins will cost you something like £35, £40, and then you've got to pay for the shipping as well. So I buy them used. So they are covered, as you can see, in various dings, marks. There's a split in the plastic there, which I will fill. Um, with some body filler but the rest of the marks that are on this I will just leave as they are now the reason for that isn't laziness well it is partially um, when I first started looking into painting these um, a guy who does them down in England had said look don't don't fill them and make them perfect because once you paint them they tend to look very plasticky and kind of fake looking like like sort of kiddies toys and of course I didn't listen and I first bowling pin I got I made it and I spent you know a good number of hours getting it perfect and by the time I painted it it was right enough it, it just looked, it looked like a kid's toy it didn't look real at all so I wouldn't be too overly concerned with filling in all the marks I've actually got one that's the base coat on it here certainly is finished um, this was done in a, a red metal flake but you should be able to make out couple of marks in there somewhere certainly some more at the top end here tends to be the worst bit that suffers the most but as you can see once it's base coated and cleared you don't tend to see the marks all that badly they don't stick out so much obviously they stick out here that's been base coated and just a, a, a straight white um, for the camera more than anything else so that you can actually see the marks in it and just how many there is but as I say once that's base coated um, in whatever colour you're doing it by the time you lacquer it these won't show out quite as badly and as I say it adds to a little bit of character on it so you know don't waste your time filling it it's just going to look shit when it's done um, as I say anything that's really bad such as that split there um, yeah fill that definitely but everything else, all these little dings and knocks, no, just leave them. Um, one of the things you need to be careful with when you're painting one of these is, you know, whether or not, whether you're using a gun or not, um, or a can, is your distance from it. Now, obviously you're normally about six inches away from your surface when you're painting, but what you've got to remember with the bowling pin is the profile on this here. It comes in and out all over the place, so if you start spraying at the top, for example, and you keep going all the way down by the time you get to here you're a lot closer you see that and that's going to run and of course you get further down you're further away again you're back to where you were so just bear that in mind as you're coming down follow the contour of it as you're spraying so as you're spraying along like this you want to be kind of following the contour and down like that Does that make sense just follow it like that. Now when you are painting these, now that principle there applies to using the it doesn't make any difference. Um, exactly the same idea, keep it at the angle and just follow the contour of it to make sure you get the coverage nice and even. Um, if you are painting these, there's a couple of ways you can do it. Now obviously if you've got it on a work surface like this, you're kind of limited when you get down the bottom here. You can only kind of do one portion of it and then you've kind of got to turn it round and do the next bit. Um, because obviously you can only go that far and your gun or your can is going to stop and you can't quite get in. Even if you turn it, 
you're going to struggle. So probably the best thing to do is just hold it at the top and just spray the bottom as you go round. And that way, once you've sprayed about half of it, you can put it down and start spraying around and you can just turn it by hand and do it that way. What I actually have for doing these is I've actually got an old bird table and the, the top of it's off, the base plate's still there and there's a bolt that goes up through the base plate and that bolt fits perfectly in the bottom hole there so I've actually got essentially a sort of bowling pin stand it's, it's about four feet high um, I can sit the pin on that and I can actually walk right round the whole thing with the gun and spray it all in one go um, so if you've got something like that you could even make something just use a thick piece of plywood put a wooden dowel through it and you've got something that you can sit on and you can actually turn as well it does make life a lot easier um, you know if you don't want to go to that kind of hassle to do that for you if you're not actually painting that many I mean I'm painting dozens of these at any given time sometimes I don't I do them every so often it's not like I'm doing them every week um, but when I do start on pins I'll, I'll tend to be doing maybe half a dozen to a dozen at any one time um, so you know if, if you're not going to sort of make make a sort of jig for it um, just hold a pin like that and spray the bottom and do it from the bottom up because at least that way once this is if this is still wet you can still turn your pin at the top and paint it as you go higher you know if you start down here I start painting from the top up turning it down here is a heck of a lot more difficult so it just, it just makes life a wee bit easier for you I see once you've base coated it um, you do want to lacquer it as well um, the artwork side of it, you know, obviously I'm not going to get into that because the artwork's going to be whatever you are either capable of or what you think is going to look good on these. Um, a lot of these are hand pinstriped or they're, they're done with graphics, um, logos, that type of thing. Um, they're great pieces, um, really good conversation items to have as well. And they're also just good display pieces to show what you can do. They're quite easy to transport about if you're going to shows or anything like that. Um, I usually take maybe three or four pins with me if I'm going to a show. Um, I have one that is over here. That is done in black with green metal flake. Um, just a, a really simple old school hot rod flame job on it. You know, nothing too too fancy. You know, and that again it's just a, it's an interesting piece to, to sort of have and take around with me. Um, just to show what I can do. Um, these ones, uh, this one here is actually going to be as a commission for a customer um, that I will be finishing fairly soon. That will have some quite intricate artwork on it. I'll probably spend quite a few hours on that. Um, other ones that I'm doing just now are going to be new display pieces uh, for shows because I like to keep them fresh. The, the ones that I have just now that are all painted, I've had for about probably three or four years now. And... You know, I don't want to take them to shows anymore because people are going to look and think, you know, he's just bringing the same old shit. The end. You know, every show. Um, you know, we're not even going to go and speak to them anymore. Um, so I want to keep things interesting in that respect. So I'm doing a few new designs on these, and uh, we'll be able to take them to shows in the summer. Um, I hope those couple of wee tips help um, if you're painting these. Um, as I say, don't spend too long filling them. Fix any bad cracks, but other than that, just leave all the dings and knots. Because by the time you clear coat it you're really not going to notice them that badly and if you do make it perfect it's actually going to look worse. Hope that helps, I've got to get back to drawing these bloody dogs so I'll catch you all later.